Only on CBS This Morning, we have a first-hand look at the search for a U.S. aircraft carrier lost for almost 77 years. The research vessel, vessel Petrol made history in 2017 when it discovered the wreck of the USS Indianapolis, which was sunk in the Pacific by a Japanese submarine in World War II. Now that same crew is focusing on the USS Hornet. The aircraft carrier launched 1942's famous Doolittle bombing raid on Tokyo. The crew invited Mark Phillips along for the expedition in the South Pacific, east of the Solomon Islands. Good morning and welcome to somewhere in the South Pacific and to the search for the USS Hornet, one of the most fabled carriers of the Second World War. You might think looking for an aircraft carrier, something so big, would be a straightforward thing. But it's a big ocean, and around here, it's about three miles deep. And the first question is where to start looking. The search begins in Iron Bottom Sound, the infamous graveyard for ships and men around Guadalcanal, where some of the most intense and costly naval battles of the Second World War were fought and where the research vessel Petrol and her crew begin the hunt for a wreck that's been lost for 77 years. Carriers on both sides were under almost constant air attack. The Hornet was engaged in the 1942 battle for control of the skies over Guadalcanal. U.S. forces fought off counter blows. Where U.S. Marines were holding a crucial airstrip the Japanese desperately wanted back. It was a new kind of sea war. With the planes functioning as the principal attack weapon. I looked up, and here was a Japanese dive bomber on his way down with his tracer bullets coming out of his wings right at me. We spoke right to Richard Nowatsky on a video link. He was 18 that day on the Hornet. He's 95 now. The two torpedoes that came in, it, it took that Hornet and shook it just like a dog with a bone. And then we start listing over to the right, and no power. We stopped dead in the water. The Hornet was finished. 140 of her crew were dead. The rest ordered to abandon ship. The Japanese then sank her. The tactical victory for the enemy. The Hornet became another wartime tragedy, another lost grave. Out of the bridge, heading change complete. Thank you, Bridge. The Petrol has come to try to find it in the vast South Pacific Ocean. About 140 square miles of ocean is what you're looking yeah. at roughly there. Yeah, indeed. So this, this is needle in a haystack country is what you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Rob Kraft and his team have done their homework. That's when they change course to go east. In a project funded by the late Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen, who had a passion for maritime history, they've outfitted a state-of-the-art deep-sea research vessel. Here, this is hour-by-hour hour information. They've gone over records from other ships involved in the battle and plotted where those ships thought they were. We but have. in battle, records are often unreliable. So there's an actual ship's log. They even looked at records in the Japanese naval archives from the ships that sank the Hornet. So the U.S. narrative and the Japanese Imperial Navy, wartime Navy's logs, both point to the same rough place. Yeah, in close proximity. So that, you know, that's a good clue. Take her away, Rudy. A good enough clue to go have a look. The Petrol drops a torpedo-shaped underwater drone over the side. Here we go. Dive one. It's programmed to dive down, in this case more than three miles down, and to scan the bottom with sonar waves, looking for something that shouldn't naturally be there. So we've got about an hour, hour and a half trip down to the bottom, and she'll start her first survey. It's a tense time. Only when the thing is retrieved, go start breaking it in nice and slow, and its data examined, does the crew know if it's found anything. Ay, 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 ay. The data shows mile after mile of empty seabed, until that looks like debris. It does look like debris, doesn't it? Has it found something? You have something here. You can see the the, the difference here. How about oh, the top man. left? What does that look like? I don't know. I think that looks suspiciously like a ship, but is it enough to warrant another dive? I'm thinking about it, yeah. He didn't think for long. Good to go, spun up. Yeah. All right then. Only the Petrol's camera-laden, remotely operated sub can find out if it's a ship or the ship. Three, two, one, splash. 
and she's on her way down. Narrow Bay going to sea. They don't just have dive machines aboard this vessel, they have time machines, things that go down through the water and back into the past. The search for the Hornet, three miles down and from 77 years ago, continues tomorrow. <laughs> and in Mark's report tomorrow on CBS This Morning, we'll find out if the crew actually discovered the aircraft carrier or were met with just another frustrating example of false hopes. More on that tomorrow, and we'll be right back.